I was just preparing for another coding session and I noticed a very interesting thing that the, the counter down below actually has an absolutely different uh, color, background color than everything else on the screen. So it's kind of, it's kind of interesting. <clears throat> so the background uh, color that I use usually is around like 18, 18, 18, uh, except for the Emacs, but in Emacs I recently changed the colors, uh, color theme. Uh, the color theme I used to use actually had this background and I sort of like configured everything around uh, that background. So um, I just want, before actually starting the, the coding session that I am supposed to do today, I wanted to quickly go into the source code of this counter and change the background color and also explain what the hell is this um, counter. Um, for, for those who doesn't know, you can find the source code uh, of this kind of counter in here. And this counter is called void. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so uh, another one. Every time I type void, it increments. What the hell is that? Uh, what the hell is that? This is actually very interesting. Basically, I have an interesting tick uh, when I'm typing things. And then that tick is sometimes you, you may actually notice that if you watch any of my streams or any of my videos, uh, sometimes I, I just do something, I just type in, type in, and then I'm very quickly typing void and I quickly remove it. And I had that tick since I can remember doing programming. So somehow it's it developed like around the time when I started to learn C and C++ and never went away. So from time to time, I just like quickly type void and just, just remove it. And this turned into the, this meme. Um, so I decided to create like a special application that basically every time I type void, it increments the counter so you know how many times this kind of thing happens. So yeah, <laughs> that's basically what it is. Uh, and the only thing I want to do here is just like, change the background of this entire thing. Um, I don't remember if I have uh, the source code of this thing in here. Let me quickly do that. Yeah, even if I type it unironically, well, I mean, I always type it unironically technically, even if I intend to type it, it will increment it anyway. So, yeah, so let's actually quickly uh, start the Emacs. It's a very simple application. It's uh, using SDL. Um, so let's go in here. So basically it can uh, detect your keystrokes regardless of uh, of the focus so the keystrokes are not um, gathered or not detected through the events on the window we are reading the keyboard device from uh, dev uh, dev folder directly so we open that device and we listen to the events that happen there and that way uh, we sort of bypass uh, access and stuff like that. So technically, if this thing didn't need any graphical interface, it, it would probably work without access because we're reading uh, Linux devices directly anyway. So which makes it kind of not portable, right? So it's probably not going to work anywhere except Linux, right? It's definitely not going to work on Windows and probably on other flavors of Unix because they may have like a different ways of handling uh, devices. But um, I mean, I'm using Linux most of the time, so it doesn't really matter for me. Um, so uh, so as far as I know, you render the background with uh, clear, um, I don't remember, like clear, yeah, it's a render clear. So first we set um, render draw color and we have to set values for each individual component of the color from 0 to 255. The color that I'm usually using for the background is uh, 181818. 18, 18. So that means it's in hexadecimal, uh, which is not that big of a problem. I can just do something like 18, uh, 18, 18, right? And then set FF like this. And hopefully after I rebuild everything, uh, it is going to work uh, correctly. So here's an interesting thing. The build happens in two stages, right? It happens in two stages. Uh, the first stage basically takes the image of the font um, and converts it into into byte array and that bakes it into the executable. These days, I like this is a relatively old code. This day, I usually don't do that, right? I usually just um, you know generate the array once, generate the array once, and 
just bake it into the source code but this is not a bad idea to be fair yeah so this is how it goes whatever doesn't matter so let's actually try to run this entire thing and see if it changed the background <laughs> uh this one is very interesting so if you just try to run it you won't be able to you won't be able to capture any keyboard devices because you have to have permissions you have to have permissions to read those devices so you have to run it from sudo so let's quickly run it from sudo uh, right and uh, now it detected all of the devices uh, that I can read, right? And uh, one of them is going to be the keyboard that I have. Uh, there we go. So now, as you can see, the background of this entire thing is uh, a little bit uh, brighter than the original uh, background in here. And if I do things like that, it is actually capturing all of them. That's pretty cool. So, and you may say that it's kind of dangerous to run this kind of applications in uh, in root and I would agree with you. I would totally agree with you and uh, because of that this application is not run with root Seriously, so we're utilizing the uh, set UID functionality of uh, Linux and essentially uh, There is an, an explanation on how to set it up um, So what you have to do you have to put void somewhere where it's available and you have to set its uh, set UID Right, and what the application will do, right, uh, set it, uh, I think it was, get, yeah, there we go. It will um, basically open the device and then lower its privileges down to its effective UI. I, I, I hope, yeah, yeah, so, um, so it basically then it will lower its privileges down to the normal user and then function as, you know, an application uh, with the normal user privileges. So. It even supports a set uh, GID, right? So you not necessarily have to give it like a root privileges. You can give it the privileges of the group uh, that can read from devices and it will still lower its privileges to the group of the user that ran the application. So yeah, it's, I guess it's relatively safe. I'm not a security specialist. Maybe it is quite unsafe. Uh, but I, I don't know, so uh, I try to uh, take as many precautions as possible while, uh, you know, developing this entire thing. So, all right, so we fixed that. Let me now uh, quickly copy the executable to where it belongs. I think I keep it somewhere in the user local bin, right? And I'm going to put it like that. I'm going to just uh, do it like this. Uh, cannot create regular file. Uh, oh yeah, because I'm currently running this into application, I suppose. Maybe that's the reason. Uh, yeah, 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 so now I managed to replace this entire thing. And after that, I have to set uh, its like sticky bits uh, to, to the input group. So I'm going to change the owner to root uh, and input, right? Uh, again, I have to do that from the, from the root. And then I'm going to set the sticky bit. There we go. So now if I just run void <clears throat> from a, a regular user, it will have an access to uh, to my keyboard and uh, there we go. Everything looks good. Oh yeah, I recently changed the size of the font. Hmm. Which actually made it look kind of crappy. So let me see. Uh, if I can change that. Yeah, so I have to go back here, right? And let me actually stash everything, go back to master. So I've been doing some experiments with the font because I wasn't happy with the size of the font and I forgot to clean up my current folder. So <laughs> that's basically what happened. Uh, you know, welcome to software development, I suppose. Uh, welcome to software development. Uh, all right, so and I'm gonna do this entire thing one more time. So I'm gonna be copying this thing into the folder. Then I'm gonna be changing the owner um, of this executable, and then I'm gonna be send, uh, setting the sticky bits. And there we go. If I run void, I should have the access to this entire thing. And there we go. Everything seems normal, uh, which is quite cool. And now, if you compare it. Um, I don't know, let's put like this, yeah. So this was the original image at the beginning of the video. So everything more or less with the same background color, right? Um, <clears throat> so, okay. That, that's pretty much it. Thanks everyone for watching. Uh, so let's move on with an actual software development.